Hello guys, in this video we will see another important question related to logistic regression that could be asked in any ML interview. Okay, so the question goes something like this. What it means if the parameters in the logistic regression have the value 0? Now this question can be asked in more than one ways. So for example, let's say what it means if the theta parameters are set to 0 in logistic regression or they can ask what it means if beta parameters in logistic regression are set to 0. Okay, so all, all those means one and the same, they are referring to the learnable parameters here. Okay, so if you are following my video, I will be referring to the learnable parameters as thetas. Okay, so let's stick to the same notations. Now, in order to answer this question, there are two types. Okay, so there are two ways to answer this. So the first one is just the basic answer. Okay, so let me just write it down. The first one is the basic answer. The second one actually depends on how well you understand the logistic regression, in what depth you have understood the concept. So the second answer basically exposes your level of understanding. Okay, so level of understanding. So I will try to give you both the answers. Please watch the video till the end because it is going to be really, really important. Okay, so the first answer which will give us the basic idea of how well you understand the logistic regression okay it's not in depth so you all know that logistic regression is represented with this particular formula 1 by 1 plus e to the power minus theta transpose x where this theta transpose x is a linear sum of parameters multiplied with the feature values right so the question is what it means if the parameters are set to 0 so let's take any one parameter for example let's take theta 1 so theta 1 is associated with feature x1 correct so what if this theta 1 is set to 0 after training our model so it means that the feature that is this particular feature x1 also called as predictor variable okay is not contributing to the prediction of the target variable so this also means that there is no significant relationship between this particular feature and our target variable. So these two things are not related in any way. So this could be one of the reasons why our ML model setting the value theta 1 to 0. So what happens if we set it to 0? We are actually nullifying the effect of x1. We are nullifying x1. So we are making everything associated with x1 as 0 so that we are not considering this x1 in our in predicting the target variable y. Okay. So, this could be the simple and basic answer. But this could also be set to 0 because of multicollinearity in the data set. Multicollinearity in the data set. So, what happens if we have multicollinearity? Before answering that, you need to know what is multicollinearity. Okay. So, we say that multicollinearity exists if one feature is dependent on one or more features in the data set. So, if we have the data set, let us say x1, x2, x3, let us say we have n features and in the end we have target variable y. So, x1 to xn are our features, right? These are our features and this is our target variable. So, we say that there exists a multicollinearity in the data set if these features are dependent on each other. Not, not necessarily all the features need to be dependent on other features. But let us say x1, if it is dependent on x2 or x3 or both, we say that we have multicollinearity in the data set. Okay? So, this will be a problem. So, what happens if we have multicollinearity? In this case, the coefficients or the parameters that are learned with respect to these variables theta1, theta2, theta3, etc these cannot be trusted these cannot be trusted okay and these will not be a stable params these will be unstable parameters okay so this is the basic answer what you can give if you are asked this particular question in an interview now coming to the second answer so this will this will help you to uh, have the better Increase the confidence in your candidature with the interviewer. Okay. So, what the answer and how it should be. Okay. So, you need to express this in terms of odds. 
Okay, so let me explain the answer now. So, if any parameter or parameters in the logistic regression have the value 0, it means that change in the feature value does not significantly change the odds of the target variable. So, let me just write it. So, it's it means that change in the feature value feature value does not significantly does not significantly change the odds of the target variable change the odds of our target variable okay so in order for you to explain it in more depth you need to understand what are odds And remember, you need to explain it with respect to logistic regression only. Okay. So, what are odds? So, odds, it represents the likelihood of an event occurring given a set of features. Okay. So, let me just write that down. So, what are odds? It represents likelihood of an event occurring given a set of features okay so what is our event here this is our target variable okay so what are odds it represents the likelihood of an event occurring given a set of features okay so how does how do we calculate odds so it's simple odds is calculated as probability of the event occurring divided by probability of the event not occurring okay so let's say uh, we have a prediction on whether today rain occurs or not so the probability of rain occurring today is let's say 0.4 there is a 40 percent chance that rain will occur today okay so 40 percent chance so what are the odds what are the odds of rain right so we have to calculate it like this so it is 0.4 divided by 1 minus 0.4 so it is 0 0.4 by 0 0.6 4 by 6 or 2 by 3 so these are the odds so it is less than 1 okay so this is what odds mean by so what logistic regression does logistic regression models the logarithm of odds okay so how it does it models the logarithm of odds and call it as log of odds as ln of p by 1 minus p so this is a natural logarithm or log 10 or log 10 okay so this is what logistic regression models so from log of odds we will calculate the odds using the formula exp log of odds okay or in simple terms it's e to the power log of odds so this is how we calculate the odds from log of odds so this is done for each feature in the data set considering one feature at a time okay so what do i mean by that so let's say we have x1 x2 x3 up to xn and our target variable y so what we do we calculate the odds of the event occurring with respect to each feature here x1 x2 x3 separately or independently separately or independently so what do i mean by this so what we do so it's simple okay so we change each feature value one at a time by keeping others constant so during the first iteration we change the value of x1 by one unit so basically what we will do we will increase the value by one unit increase value of x1 by one unit and calculate the odds of event y by keeping other feature values constant 
Okay, so this is how we calculate the log of odds with respect to each independent feature. Okay, now coming to the value of odds. So hope hope this is clear, right? So you know I am coming to the answer in the end. So what what I said? This is the second type of answer wherein your in depth understanding would be tested. Okay, so the simple answer is. If the value is zero for any of the parameter, it means that change in the feature value does not significantly change the odds of the target variable. So we have made this statement, right? Now I am explaining what odds mean by and how we are calculating it. And now I will tell you what each value of odds represents. Okay? So what if value of odds is greater than one? So it indicates that increase in the likelihood of an event occurring for one unit increase in the feature value right so if we get the odds ratio greater than 1 it indicates an increase in the likelihood okay increase in likelihood of the event occurring of the event occurring by increase by one unit increase in the feature value so in other words so if we have x1 here if we increase its value by 1 unit 1 unit increase there is a increase in the likelihood of event being occurring okay increase in the likelihood of event occurring okay so this is what odds if it is greater than 1 okay so what if odds is less than 1 what if the value of odds is less than 1 so it indicates a decrease in the likelihood of the event decrease in the likelihood of event in our case it will be y decrease in the likelihood of event y given an increase in the value of that particular feature unit increase in the value of that particular feature okay so what if odds value is, is equal to 1 right so just think pause the video for the moment and then think i am going to give you the answer now okay so it indicates that there is no change in the likelihood there is no change in likelihood of the event when we increase the feature value by one unit okay so in other words if the odds ratio is 1, that particular feature, let us say in our case, we are considering only one feature x1, this feature is not dip, is not contributing to, not contributing anything for prediction of value of our target variable y, okay. So, this is not a useful feature, not a useful feature. So, it is better we do away or drop this particular feature or column from the data set and consider other features x2, x3 up to xn and then we can consider the same method calculate the odds ratio with respect to the event. If remove all those features where the odds ratio is 1. Why? Because the probability of event occurring is equal to probability of event not occurring. So, this simply means that no matter whether the feature exists or not, if it exists or it does not exist or if the value of it remains constant or it increases or decreases, the probability of the event occurring always remains same that is 0.5. Okay? So, this particular feature is not contributing in any way in order to calculate the likelihood of this particular event y. Okay? So, when will be odds equal to 1? In what scenario odds will be equal to 1? If you just think, a simple example would be a coin toss. If you toss a coin, probability of getting heads is 0.5 and probability of getting tails is 0.5, right? So, if you want to calculate the odds ratio of head, so it will be probability of head divided by 1 minus probability of head, right? Probability of event happening, probability of event not happening. So, this is 0.5 by 0.5. So, this is 1. Correct? So, this is a simple example. 
of the scenario when odds ratio will be equal to 1. Okay. So, hope you have understood the concept of odds and how you can approach to answer this particular question if you are asked in the interview. Okay. So, if you like the content, please give it a thumbs up and share it among your peers so that they will also learn from it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. Till we see in the next video. Happy learning. Bye.